At Mount Butmasgita, it's usually late afternoon when the fog pulls in. It's a familiar sight for the people who live here. This region in southwestern Morocco spends about 10 days a month shrouded in fog. Not everyone here likes the fog, but Peter Trautwein, an industrial designer from Germany, comes here especially because of it. It's like a creature that's hard to capture and put your finger on. The fog comes and then it's gone again. But it brings something with it, and that's water, potable water of a very high quality. Ever since I realized that, I see the fog very differently. The wind pushes the fog against the net, where it gathers into droplets. The droplets start to fall, and they're collected. Techniques for obtaining water have been used in other parts of the world, but not with fog collectors like these. Peter Trautwein was commissioned by the German Water Foundation to perfect the technology. Next, they'll set up a big installation. It's well worth the effort. Rainfall is scarce in the area around Mount Butmesgida. During the dry season, there's often an acute water shortage. Mohammad Hamouwali helped build the fog collector. He knows what it's like when water is scarce. Hamouwali grew up here. As a boy, he often spent hours every day leading the family's donkey to a spring to fetch water. Now he's an expert at building the new fog collectors. Hamouwali will also help build the large installation. Before I saw it, I thought the idea was very strange. I asked myself, is it really possible to turn fog into water? I'd never heard of such a thing, and I couldn't really picture it. Today, this picture is becoming less and less common. Some locals have already sold their donkeys. Dar Sikhmad, a regional NGO, first came up with the idea of tapping the fog on Mount Butmesgida. They began experimenting with nets 10 years ago. In 2013, the German Water Foundation joined the project. At first, they had many questions. What kind of mesh fabric is best? What's the best way to position the net? The team also wanted to make sure the system would be easy to build. Foundation, metal frame, and ropes have to be sturdy enough to withstand strong wind. A lot of attention to detail went into making this project a success. Then you take a rubber expander, hook it back here, stretch this a bit, and then you adjust it all a bit. Now it's nice and tight, and you can see how it will move with the wind. The system includes these tipping counters. They measure the daily catch. That data is analyzed by researchers at the Technical University in Munich, Germany, every day. We measure according to what's called a fog event. The amounts have varied quite a bit. Using our best mesh fabric, we've been able to gather about 22 liters of water per square meter, and that's quite a lot. An installation like this could be used anywhere in the world where fog is common. A panel cost between 9 and 13,000 euros, depending on its size, the local price of material, and how much can be done by the local communities. The water will travel from Mount Botmusgida through a network of reservoirs, filters, cisterns, and pipes until it finally reaches the villages. Monir Abbar is the technical manager for the project. He monitors the distribution system that has been supplying five villages during the pilot phase. Soon, more villages will be added to the network. The water meets the standards of the World Health Organization. But before it arrives at the village, it will be mixed with other water. Water from fog doesn't contain any minerals, but we want our potable water to have some minerals, so we mix some groundwater into the fog water. 
On mélange l'eau du fourrage avec l'eau de, de brouillard. These days, Mohamed Hamwali uses well water only for the animals. For the past year, his family has been getting drinking water straight from the tap. Thanks to the fog collector, his siblings won't have to spend hours a day fetching water.